to remove the cargo lid panel we're going to need a pry tool uh, actually what I need is a step stool <laughs> Once it's loose, disconnect the lights and just pull forward and that comes out. Just like the factory one would be formed in the back front and we're gonna use the fast ring. Right there. Right there. Okay. I just wanna hang on. Yeah. So go down. Oh really? It doesn't yeah. work like that? Go up. More. 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 Right there. Alright, cool. You can turn it off. And just like the front, we have to roll the window down. The fast ring is not gonna hit on the window. We gotta cut it. I took like a half inch. Second piece, we do the same thing. installing the last piece of the fast rank test fit it make sure it's not gonna hit the actually panel and this one like everything else we gotta cut it now just in case you're wondering why we went through and, and cut this foam it'll squish right Fernando correct well not necessarily what happens a lot of the time is it actually rolls and it will roll in onto the surround of the speaker and can actually do the opposite of what it's trying to do it'll destroy the speaker that's why he takes such care to make sure that it's touching the door panel but it's not getting squished by the door panel you just want to make sure it's it's lightly grazing it and that way when it does push up on it, it only pushes it a small amount and that as you can see, it's not going to crush the speaker in. We've actually had people send us pictures of some destroyed, really expensive speakers and people not using them properly. Correct. The cargo door is done. To power this system, we're gonna be using the Kenwood Exelon XR 901.5 high-res five-channel class D amplifier. Now checking out the specs on the back of this, it is 75 watts by four and 600 by one. Inside the top, you'll find the instructions along with a bag of parts, a couple Allen keys, and some screws for the base knob, which is located here in this enclosure. Now, one thing about this base knob, it is designed to be mounted through something. There are no screw provisions on it. And it does come with your standard style phone connector. The amplifier has this unique gray color to it. It's not black, it's this like grayish, purple color. On the end, you have your inputs. We have three 40 amp fuses, four gauge inputs, front, rear, sub. Located on the back of the amplifier is where all your adjustments are. Input sensitivity or gain control for front, rear, sub. Your bass knob plugs on the back side of the amplifier. That is kind of the only weird thing about this amp, but we'd much rather have the bass knob than no bass knob. This is a new feature for this. The previous version did not have it. Next up is going to be bass boost. It has has up to 18 dBs of boost, low pass filter, front high pass, rear high pass, all select
selectable between 50 to 200. The two front high pass can be off or on. The sub does not have an on off switch. On the top of the amplifier is this little panel here with two Allen screws. The Allen keys in the parts bag are the ones you're looking for. It is just a little piece of metal that comes off. I like to put it back in my owner's manual bag so I don't lose it, along with the screws for the base knob and the base knob itself. The cable I leave out because I'll forget it if I don't do it now. Put your screws back into the amplifier, that way you don't lose them. I like using these, as you can see, they have this really long end here. These screws are set down in there pretty deep. Keep these out, you'll want them. I have the amplifier already mounted to our amp rack. Our amp rack is made out of quarter inch ABS. It's a very rigid plastic material. That's what allows us to bend it like this and it will keep its shape. It's supporting the amplifier now. We're gonna be using a couple of things in our installation as far as tools go. I use two different drill bits, 964 for when I'm using a four inch zip tie and I use a 532 when I'm using an eight inch zip tie. The difference here, if I'm gonna be doing multiple four inch zip ties in a row, then I will automatically go up to the 532 to drill so I'll have bigger holes to run two zip ties through. The first part of what we're gonna address here is this base knob. It's the only wire on this side of the amplifier. Just getting it out of the way in the beginning is the best move. If you are going to be drilling tight next to an amplifier like we're planning on doing here, I don't want to put the wire all the way over here. That'd be silly. Grab yourself some blue tape, tape off the areas where you're going to be drilling so you don't scratch the heat sink. I like to do two layers. Make sure when putting in your zip ties, you put them all in the same direction. And when cutting the zip ties, use a flush cutter. What makes a flush cutter unique is that this side where the cutting is, is perfectly flush. You want these zip ties right up against the lock. If not, you will be bleeding by the end of this. When making these 45s right here in the corners, it's obviously the wire doesn't want to stretch like that. Don't force it, just roll it like this. So normally you try to bend it, don't. Just, just flip it like this and have it go that way. It makes it so much easier. Even though it's a big long wire and it kind of gets in the way, if I wouldn't have done that now, I would have totally forgot about it. I don't know what it is. I always forget about the base knob wire. And since we're working on this, let's come up with our little protector right here. I gotta think about it for a minute though. I don't know how I wanna do it. All right, so after a couple minutes of thinking about it, here's what I came up with. It is a solid piece of Centra. I ground out the center of it so it'd have room for the phone jack to slide in. It slides over just like this. I have a hole in the bottom that I've already drilled. And now that'll keep little feet from kicking it, or big feet for that matter. Our wire is now safe. The nice thing too is, as you can see, I can still get to both controllers on either side. I've not blocked anything. The one thing with putting a big solid piece all the way across is that the fan is here, and I'd like the fan to breeze. This is just simpler and, well, I don't know, looks kind of cool. Reminds me of an old kicker amplifier with a module they used to put in the side. One of the unique things about the Stinger X kit is that it comes with two ground wires, one for underneath the hood by the battery and one for the amplifier. In some cars, the grounds that go to the battery from the frame are kind of small, like an eight gauge. And if that's the case, upgrading it to a four gauge, since we're running a four gauge, is a pretty good idea. This kit also comes with wire ferrules for four gauge, two ring terminals. They have this ground terminal here, little pieces of shrink wrap that say Stinger X on it, a small ferrule for the remote turn on. This is the remote turn on, they give you silver. A couple of gold plated self tapping screws, the silver screws. They give you a jumper for the fuse holder if you're doing some form of a block application with it. A little tiny piece of shrink wrap for the remote ferrule. A blue buck connector and a fork terminal for the remote turn on. Snap grommet for your firewall. And also a bundle of zip ties. The four gauge comes with the last 
three feet covered in flex loom. And then this area here where the two shrink wrap pieces are is the maximum distance that they recommend for putting your fuse holders. Since we're going underneath the seat with it, chances are this isn't gonna be anything we're gonna use. We loom all of our wire from the amplifier up to the battery. So that would be my next step is to cover both the power and ground in full loom. Thank you. 